Morning, everyone. Very good to see you all. This is a service of baptism. And baptisms are generally happy occasions. They're good times for the people being baptized, and they're a good time for the church as we get together to watch what's going on and to listen what is being said. A baptism is also, of course, a very serious thing. Following Jesus is not a game. It's not a hobby, not something we do with our spare time. Deciding to be a follower of Jesus is a, it is a decision for a whole lifetime. And uh, so this is a happy time. It's also a very serious time, a very important thing. Javid is going to teach us something today um, by what he does in uh, a few moments time. He is going to teach us um, what it means to be a follower of Jesus, because what it means to be a follower of Jesus is to obey Jesus, to do the things the Lord wants us to do. Now, let's be really clear about this. Um, we are not going to watch today someone becoming a Christian. Do we get that? We're not going to watch someone becoming a Christian. We're watching someone who is already a Christian. They have already believed in their heart. They have believed with their head. They put their trust in Jesus. They've already done that. We're watching that person obey the Lord Jesus, whose obey was to believe and to be baptized. In many countries of the world, a person can become a Christian and well, their decision may be unpopular and they may have to suffer for it, but the real trouble starts when they get baptized. That's true in many countries of the world. One young woman went to be baptized in a church and while the service was going on, the pastor, the leader of the church, noticed that against the wall of the church, there was a suitcase. And he said to one of his church members, whose suitcase is that what's that about and he was told that suitcase belongs to the young woman that you are baptizing it has all her possessions in it because her father has told her that if she gets baptized she cannot go back home again that is not uncommon in many parts of the world often being baptized is a very brave thing it may be a very brave thing for javid to be doing today Anyway, it's a great thing that he's doing, and we're thrilled that we can be here and, and watch it, can't we? You see, the whole thing about becoming a Christian is actually a very serious business. Um, first of all, in order to become a Christian, a person must seriously want to know God. I mean, really deeply, earnestly want to know God. If a person doesn't want to know God with all their heart, they're not going to become a follower of God's son, Jesus Christ. God said, you will seek for me and you will find me when you seek me with all your heart. That's a promise of God in the Bible. You will find me when you seek for me with all your heart. Years ago, a man, I think it was probably in India, somewhere in Asia anyway, uh, went to a religious teacher, a guru, and said, I really want to know God. And the guru said, do you? Do you really? He said, yes, I do. So the guru grabbed hold of him and put him into the river and held him under the water. And the man was blowing bubbles and kicking and struggling. And at the very last minute, the guru brought him up out of the water. And when the man got his breath back, he said, what did you do that for? He said, when you want to know God as badly as you wanted to breathe, you will find him. Find him with, seek him with all your heart. And a person who wants to be a Christian has to be serious about wanting to be saved from their sin, forgiven and saved for all eternity. There's a lovely passage. I'm going to read you just a few bits of it from uh, the gospel according to Mark in the New Testament part of the Bible. It's a story about a man called Bartimaeus. He is always called in the Bible, blind Bartimaeus. It's, a, it's sad, but true that 
even then as now people are often identified by their disability isn't that true um you've been watching strictly come dancing some of you have some of you haven't one of the contestants is hearing impaired is a deaf young woman and millions of people have been googling on their phones who's the deaf girl on strictly isn't that interesting that's the way that she's identified it's sad but it's it's true and here's a man called bartimaeus and we read this in mark chapter 10 and verse 46 as Jesus and his disciples, together with a large crowd, were leaving Jericho, a blind man, Bartimaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many rebuked him, told him to be quiet, but he shouted all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and said, call him so they called to the blind man here are some of the most marvelous words in the bible you ready they called to the blind man cheer up on your feet he's calling you isn't that brilliant cheer up on your feet he's calling you throwing his cloak aside he jumped to his feet and came to jesus what do you want me to do for you jesus asked him the blind man said rabbi i want to see go said jesus your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. Now, the reason I read that is because I'm making the point that someone who becomes a Christian must really want to be saved. They must really want to be healed from the problem of their sin. Bartimaeus was absolutely serious, wasn't he, about wanting to get his sight back. And he was so serious, he didn't care what other people said to him. He was so serious, they didn't care. He didn't care what other people thought about him. He jumped up. He came to Jesus publicly. He came to Jesus promptly. He came to Jesus prayerfully. That's how to become a follower of Christ. To be so serious about wanting to have your sins forgiven, but you don't care what people think. You don't care what people say. You don't care what people do. All that matters, son of David, have mercy on me. And if we want to follow Christ, then we must be serious about serving him, about doing the things that he wants us to do. And part of that, of course, is obeying his command to be baptized. Also in the gospel, according to Mark, we read about Jesus encountering a man who was demon possessed, a terrible reality then, a terrible reality for many people even today, even here in our scientific, rationalistic, secularistic West. A terrible reality that people can be invaded by an evil personality and overrun by an evil spirit. And Jesus met a man like that. And when Jesus met him, the man was living in the tombs, cut off from society. He was desperately unhappy with himself because he was self-harming, cutting himself with stones. He was beyond restraint. He was breaking all the fetters and the shackles people put on him. And he came and ran up to Jesus. And within moments of meeting Jesus, the Bible says that man was sitting down, dressed and in his right mind. Tremendous transformation when that man met Jesus. And he begged, this is what the Bible says, he begged Jesus to let him go with him. But Jesus said, go home to your family. Tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he has had mercy on you. So the man went away and began to tell in the 10 towns how much Jesus had done for him. That's what the Lord wants those of us who believe in him to do, to serve him, to serve him. Now, it's very important that we understand that service for Christ follows salvation. We don't serve Jesus in order to get right with God. We serve Jesus because he has put us right with God. So we serve him out of gratitude. The idea that God forgives us, that God accepts us, that God saves us because of what we do, because of the good things we do, is as old as time. 
and it's incredibly difficult to dislodge in people's minds. It's a darkness which inhabits the minds of so many people. Well, what dispels darkness? Light dispels darkness. And the Bible says that the entrance of God's word brings light. So just listen to me for a moment. I'm going to read to you now a few of the things which the Bible says about how we can be put right with God, not on the basis of how we behave, but on the basis of in whom we believe. Listen to these words. Let God's light shine. It is not according to works of righteousness, which we have done. It is according to his mercy that he saves us. It is by grace we are saved not by works. If being right with God came through keeping God's law, writes Paul to the Galatians, then Christ died needlessly. What must I do to be saved, asked the man of the apostle Paul. And Paul said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. Do you get that? Believe, not behave. Of course, behavior is important, but it follows believing. Of course, serving Christ is important, but it follows being saved. No one, Romans chapter 3, will be justified, put right with God by the works of the law. Know this, wrote the Apostle Paul, a person is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith in Jesus Christ. Many years ago, I was preaching on the streets in Dublin, and a man came up to me who was an ardent member of a church which taught that the way to be right with God was by keeping God's law. The way to be right with God, his church taught, was by doing good stuff, by behaving well. And I said, can, can, I look, can we look together at some words in the Bible? And we spent quite some time going over words from the Bible like I'm reading to you now. At the end, I said, what do you think? He said, you've made a cast iron case for what you're telling me. I said, will you believe it? He said, no, because my church tells me that I have to do. You see, it's a darkness. It's a fog. It's difficult to dispel. Is the light dawning today? It's not according to works of righteousness. Javid, when he's been baptized, will go on to live for Christ and he will serve Christ. We'll think in a few minutes about how we can serve Christ, but make sure you've got this in your mind. He will not be serving Christ in order to be saved. He will be serving Christ because he has been saved. Someone came to the Lord Jesus, it's recorded in the Gospels, and said, what must we do to do the work that God requires? Now, are you listening, friends? What must we do to do the work that God requires? You might have a problem with the teaching of St. Paul or St. Peter or, 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 or James or Timothy or any of the other writers of the New Testament. But this is what Jesus said. What must we do to do the works that God requires? Jesus replied, the work of God is this, to believe in the one whom he has sent. Now, I cannot make that any clearer. I don't make any apologies for making it as clear as I have because it's absolutely pivotal and absolutely crucial. Is the Holy Spirit speaking to you now? Are you hearing his voice through these words that I'm reading to you from God's word? Give up trying to be right with God by keeping the Ten Commandments. Give up trying to be right with God by living by the Sermon on the Mount. Turn your back on being right with God by living by the Golden Rule. That's not the way to be put right with God. That's not the message of the gospel. The message of the gospel, Paul to the Romans chapter 1 verse 17, is this. In the gospel is revealed a way to be right with God, which doesn't depend on keeping the law. It is by faith from first to last. Let me paraphrase. It, the gospel message tells us there's a way to be right with God, which doesn't depend on us being good. I mean, how emphatic can I be? <laughs> This isn't Bob Telford's doctrine. This isn't Old Depart Evangelical Church's doctrine. This is scripture. This is what the Bible says. There is a way to be right with God. Isn't that good news? Because we're all born wrong with him. And the longer we live, the deeper the pit we dig for ourselves. But there is a way to be right with God. And it doesn't depend on being good. It depends on having faith in Jesus Christ. Well, 
I was asked to speak this morning, actually not about baptism, but about finding God's will and about serving. I'm, I'm holding most of that. I parked most of that for next Sunday, God willing. But I will say a few words about how we can serve the Lord very crisply. <clears throat> These are some of the ways we can serve the Lord Jesus. Number one, stand up for him. Stand up for him. And that begins with baptism. Stand up for him. And that means be baptized. It's like putting on a uniform and showing whose side you're on when a person is baptized. And uh, incidentally, I I've met people plenty of times when I've talked to them about baptism. They said, well, I'm praying about it. I'm asking God for guidance. You don't need guidance about baptism. If I said to you, thou shalt not commit adultery, would you say to me, I'm praying about it? It's there, it's in God's word. We obey it. We don't need guidance about it. God has said, be baptized. Stand up for him is a way of serving him. Speak up for him in any and every situation where you can. Don't be ashamed to tell people that you believe in Jesus. Remember what Jesus said to the man, to, to, to the man who'd had the evil spirits? He said, go home and tell people what good things the Lord has done for you. He didn't say go home and preach sermons. Just go home and tell people what the Lord has done for you, how he's had mercy on you. Stand up for him. Speak up for him and shine for him. The Bible says those who follow Jesus should shine like stars in a dark night sky. Show people that he's real by living a life of integrity, a life of love. At home, I know it's often difficult for us to say much about our faith. Oddly, with the people that are closest to us. It's often difficult and sometimes inappropriate to say much about our faith when we're in the workplace. I remember what somebody once said, that 99% 90, of witnessing at work is about working. And I agree with that. But still be prepared to speak up for him and shine like stars in a dark night sky so that people will ask you questions. It is always permissible to answer someone's questions. So live in a way which provokes those questions. Fourthly, what have I said? Stand up for him, speak up for him, shine out for him, support people to do God's work in places that you can't go. And fifthly, a way of serving Jesus, strengthen your local church by playing your part and using your gift. God's will, finding God's will, I was asked to say about that, more about that next week. But very quickly, I say this. God's general will is that, number one, we believe in Jesus. This is the work, the will that God requires. God's general will is that we play our part in making disciples. We've been given the green light to do that. We don't need guidance about that. God's general will, 1 Thessalonians, is that we abstain from immorality. God's general will in the Bible is that we give thanks in all circumstances. And God's general will for each of us is that we love one another. So I've spoken a little about salvation and a little about service and a little about finding God's will for our lives. So we're going to watch uh, as Javid is baptized now. We're going to realize that we're watching a man who knows Jesus and loves Jesus. We're watching him obey Jesus and set out on a life of serving Christ by standing up for him, speaking up for him, shining out for him, supporting God's work overseas and strengthening the local church. Thank you so much for your fellowship this morning. I'm glad I could be with you for this happy occasion. The Lord bless you.